No, Thomas, that's the wrong fold. Oh, shit. My bad. Sorry. Welcome back, everybody, to the Gin and Thomas podcast. Uh, it's the show where we share a drink with friends. I am your host, Thomas. Uh, as many of you know, I have a passing interest in origami, and I've been really looking to step up my game and my talent, so I brought in the origami master of St. Louis himself, Brandon Churchill. Brandon, how you doing? I'm good, Thomas. How are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, let me say I'm looking forward to everything that you have to teach me. I'm very, very excited. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, what, what's your favorite thing to fold? Clothes. Um, d- it's an art form. I like like little t-shirts that you make out of the dollar bill origami or no, d- did I call the wrong guy? <laughs> but uh, anyway, everybody, um, uh, so, so, sorry, that just made me laugh. <laughs> sorry, everybody. So, um, you know what we do here on the show? Every week we like to try uh, a new cocktail and review it. So, uh, before we get started, this drink actually has two new ingredients. So, to tease the drink a little bit, um, but we have two new ingredients. Uh, Aperol and what is this called? Amaro Montenegro, which I'm glad that I got these for this drink because these are going to be coming up in a lot of drinks to come. Very nice. So they're this is a cool bottle. I think so, too. It's very... Um, Different. Geometric, almost. Is that a right kind of... I don't know. This end kind of looks like the, the trumpet stopper for when oh, you're... Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so let's hit this sip of Aperol real quick. A sweeter Campari. Oh, I like that a lot. It is a sweeter Campari, for sure. I would be, ooh, I'm excited to be using this. So, um, uh, aperitivo, I'll get it, I'll, we'll get into all of this after we review the drink, but it looks pretty good from 1919, product of Italy. And so now we're having a little sip of the Amaro Montenegro. Odd. Not bad. It's Different. Almost I, black licorice but yeah, not black licorice, but similar. I wasn't similar. expecting that at all. We'll have to, I'm going to have to get into this and what these are made out of. Very interesting. But anyway, the drink itself. Another ingredient in this drink that we've had before. Lemon juice. One, yeah. Should we try some of that? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so this drink, of course, is the paper crane, which is a riff of the paper plane, but uses um, baiju instead mm. of bourbon. So we're uh, coming back with the baiju. And okay. I talked on a recent episode when we bringing it back, right? Um, but so this drink, it is equal parts. So like one ounce or one, one part Baiju, one part Aperol, one part Amaro Montenegro, Mo- Montenegro. Yeah. Um, and one part lemon juice yep. shaken with ice, double strained into a glass. And so we're going to try our drink here. That tropical Baiju banana is really coming through. Yep. It's um, very good really rounds out kind of the uh, the harshness of the Amaro Montenegro. I don't know. It tastes really good. I feel like the, the the botanical taste from the Aperol blends well. Beautiful color, by the way. Let's start off with that. Yeah, beautiful orange. Yeah, it's like almost like a... It's almost like a peachy orange. I don't know. It's, well, it's, it's the color's coming from this yeah. Aperol mixed with the uh, lemon juice. So it's like a... Very beautiful. <clears throat> light orange. I don't even I, I don't even know how to describe some of these tastes because I'm tasting the baiju, but the other things are there balancing it, but the lemon really opens it up in a nice way. You know, I wonder. I if, think this is a good spring drink. I think I wonder if you added a little bit of like celery salt to it because you know you know how that brightens up the uh, baiju. Yeah, dude. Uh, if I had brought the the celery bitters, that would have a really good oh, place in this drink. Yeah. Damn, I didn't bring them, so we can't even do that for the second one. But no, that would be really good. Um, a celery salt rimmed glass, celery bitters in here or something. Maybe garnish with a celery stalk. That, I think, would work very, very well. Um, so, I don't know. I wish I had more to say. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to come back to this. Yeah. Because the, the flavors are kind of doing something to me. But as it stands right now, I think I'm going to go, hmm, I don't know. The color is really nice. It almost matches my shirt. Uh, day of recording the suns are playing so i'm wearing my shirt um and so for that reason brandon i'm gonna go 7.5 blue agaves out of 10 i'll give it 22 lakers no i'm surprised you didn't say 22 ming rivers (laughs) anyway danielle what are you gonna rate this 13 
flamingos. That's pretty good. Uh, don't get excited, everybody. Unfortunately, Danielle is just here for our drink review, but uh, we make her dr- we she wants a drink when she's here in the room, so we <laughs> make her rate it too. She's just here for the drinks. Yeah, we she has to yeah. earn her uh, she has to earn her drinks by um, rating them. But speaking of flamingos, I'm going to get into this later. But I actually went to the zoo today, and you saw oh, a flamingo. Mm-hmm, they had <gasps> a lot. Overall, pretty good drink, I think. I like it. Um, it's fruity. It's a little bit bitter, but it's a little bit sweet, and I think it balances each other out really well. And that, that bitterness is really rounded out yeah. by the the sweetness in the apérol. And yeah. and you say fruity. I specific. And me and Brandon talked about this in the uh, floating down the Ming River episode, but it's almost like a banana tropical taste mm-hmm. to it. Do you like it, Brandon? Because you don't usually like bananas. Oh, he likes the baiju. Yeah, I really like the baiju. Ah. <laughs> but it's not like banana, like the banana you eat, eat now. It's like the banana Laffy Taffy, like that like old the artificial banana. artificial banana flavor. But that's like an, that's the actual flavor of like an old banana. You know that whole thing? Like the banana from the 50s is different than the banana now. I know that from you. You told yeah, me that and before. then we're going to have like a new banana pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyone listening, um, if you have noticed that the, quote, blue ice cream banana is becoming popular, it's because our current bananas are dying out, mm. and so that is slated to become our next banana. Oh it does not taste like ice cream, but it has the consistency of ice cream, but it is said to taste very good. Hmm. So in the next 10 to 15 years, probably going to be a lot more blue bananas. I'm thinking about getting one for my current job. You but it's not a tree, so yeah. put it in a pot. That's fine. Well, it also freeze to death out here, but it wouldn't be, you know. You can keep it in my plant room. Yeah. For for my work, they'll be like, yeah, we'll, we'll let Danielle have it over the <laughs> yes, winter. get me an in. I want to be a Clayton boy. <sighs> Damn, that's good. All right, y'all. I'm All right, out. Bye. Go read your uh, um, trendy girl book. She, yeah, she's got to finish this book for her book club tomorrow. Yeah. She already didn't finish the first book they read. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember she told us about that. We're actually going to be going with a little bit of a Japanese theme today. Um, Even though we're be Baiju ta- is a Chinese liqueur. Well, that's what I was going to get into. So our ambiance today, we are live at location in a beautiful Japanese garden with some uh, cherry blossom. Have we had this one before? No. Anyway. Oh, no, you're right, you're right. Um, a beautiful Japanese garden with some cherry blossoms and a nice rain. Mm-hmm. Um but this is called a paper crane, yeah. and origami is a Japanese art. Right. But this is the Asian spin on the paper, paper plane, plane, so yeah. that's the connection here. There are some Japanese alcohols I would love to get into, but I want to save those for an actual Japanese event. I've never had a Japanese whiskey. I'd really like to try a Japanese whiskey. I've had one, and I didn't love it, but I don't think I was, I don't think I was drinking it in a way that let it kind of show off what yeah. it does. Like, like, like Baiju is really good, but that's not really something I want to drink neat, at least no. this one. But this one makes amazing cocktails because it's mm. just, because so many things bring it out. Yeah. Like, and a lot of unusual combinations. I was just drinking this Japanese whiskey neat, and I don't think that was the way to enjoy it. Yeah. I don't even remember the brand, so. Um, maybe on the rocks, maybe in a sour or something. Or maybe room temperature with a little bit of water. Because I just had it in the freezer, poured yeah. a little bit and whatever. Because oh. I used to just freeze every alcohol and be like, oh, this is just how I'll too. do it. Yeah. Which I don't mind, but... Um, Some things you should you should just have a room temperature. Well, yeah, or if I'm like having whiskey, even with rocks, I would... I almost don't want an ice cold whiskey with my glass or yeah. with my rock. Yeah. I don't know. You know, anyway. Um, but yeah, no, there's some great Japanese whiskeys as well as like soju I would love to get into. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know what I was drinking last night? Palomas? No. That, Palomas are so hard to get at a bar because they don't always have the grapefruit soda. Yeah. Um, that was drinking Jameson Orange on the rocks. That sounds really good. It's well, old so fashions good. have orange, so whiskey and orange is a good combination. Oh, speaking of last night, well, this past weekend, you had a little bit of uh, Cinco de Mayo festivities. Yeah, we went to a wedding on Cinco de Mayo. That's a great like idea. They didn't serve they, tacos, though. What the fuck? No, nothing Mexican other than they had a margarita on the menu. Did you Did you come in and be like, you know, I actually scored 100% Mexican on a quiz? I was saying that constantly. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's I like, go, apparently I'm 100% Mexican. I just kind of, I just, it's like a throwaway line. Yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah, apparently I'm 100% oh, and, Mexican. Uh, hi, mom. Um, but after that episode came out, my mom said, she's like, you don't know who Selena is? And she sent me to like... <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, she sent me like the Wikipedia and like all of these like articles and stuff. I was like, all right, mom, sorry. Well, listen, I mean, we were getting dirty looks from Danielle the entire time we were talking about that. So oh, yeah. she was doing your job for you <laughs> on that one. Anyway, it looks like you had a lot of fun. And then you had a, a little college graduation for a friend this weekend. Friend, you, had a, yeah. you had a nice little, nice little active weekend and then uh, got up to some bridal stuff today. Yeah. Yep. I can assume that you're the bride. No. Oh, my, my mistake. All right. So anyway, before we uh, before we get too into everything else, let's let's <laughs> uh, let's keep it a little bit on brand for the drink. So, paper crane is uh, an origami thing, right? Yeah. So origami actually is like two words put together. So it's ori meaning folding and kami meaning paper. But kami changes to gami due to rendaku, which is some kind of Japanese pronunciation thing that. Sure. That's like, you know, linguistics is not my strong suit. And uh, so it says origami is the Japanese art of paper folding. In modern usage, the word origami is often used as an inclusive term for all folding practices, regardless of their culture of origin. The goal is to transform a flat square sheet of paper into a finished sculpture through folding and sculpting techniques. Modern, modern origami practitioners generally discourage the use of cuts glue and markings on the paper origami folders often used the japanese word kirigami uh, to refer to designs which use cuts that's very interesting that makes hmm. sense but yeah anyway um but it's so cool like these people they're so i mean like honestly this is such a deep history like i i really i don't even know how to get into all of it you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I, we could easily come back to this in some kind of Japanese uh, episode as well. But this is such like a long and rich history. I feel bad because like I didn't do enough um, research, research like for this. But I mean, it goes back to like the seventh century at least. Yeah. Oh my gosh! But there's like recreational and ceremonial and like all of the different things mean different things. Mm-hmm so cool but we have a i actually have like so much or not so much i like we actually, you know i brought a couple of other things that i want to talk about today so i would love to actually revisit um the true deep origami thing on its own time yeah but this is paper cranes so i actually wanted to talk a little bit about paper cranes okay so in an early episode i had mentioned that i am deep into making cranes and we actually had a little origami night one day i don't know if you remember that brandon Mm -hmm. So there's like this like legend and myth of like like if you fold a thousand paper cranes you like are granted like good health and good luck some some stories say that it grants you a wish right right and are you familiar with uh, Sa Sadako and the thousand paper cranes no okay so so it was about this girl and so this is from Wikipedia this is about the book. Um, it says here, so after being diagnosed with leukemia from radiation caused by the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, Sadako's friend told her to fold origami paper cranes in hope of making a thousand of them. She was inspired to do so by the Japanese legend that one who created a thousand paper cranes would be granted a wish. Her wish was simply to live through her disease so she could fulfill her dream of being on the running team. Uh, in this retelling of her story, she managed to fold only 644 cranes before she became too weak to fold any more and died in her sleep on the morning of October 25th, 1955. Uh, her friends and family helped finish her dream by folding the rest of the cranes, which were buried with her, hmm. which is really, really like sad and upsetting. And so this um, myth had kind of always been around, or not myth, like legend of folding all these um, paper cranes would grant you a wish. That had been around for a while, but when that book came out, that's kind of what like got the rest of the world into it and then my sister uh she dated this guy she dated this guy named tyler and when i went over to his house this is how i learned about it but he read the book and then like i went over his house and he just had all of these strings of paper cranes like hanging from like his ceiling and stuff and i was like mm -hmm. wow that's so cool and he told me about it and then when i got older and i got into origami i was like i gotta fold all these cranes man and i have a few hundred i don't you're I not, need you're not to, to a thousand. I yet? need to dedicate more time to it, but geez, that's a lot. A Dan thousand? Danielle's into a couple hundred, I think, as well. Yeah, I have I have some in Arizona, which I need to have boxed and shipped here, and then I have a couple hundred here. So um, I don't even know how to like count. I'm I'm just gonna have to start stringing them up. Yeah, and that's you know you you do like twenty five strings of forty or forty strings of twenty five. Mm -hmm. But um. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's just crazy. But paper cranes are the origami cranes. It's called uh, Orizuru, 
which means uh, so ori means folded and tosuru means crane. Uh, it is a design that is considered to be the most classic of all Japanese origami. In Japanese culture, it is believed that its wing carries souls up to paradise, and it is a representation of the Japanese red-crowned crane, referred to as the Honorable Lord Crane in Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. It is often used as a ceremonial wrapper or restaurant table decoration. Uh, a thousand orizuru strung together is called a senbazuru, meaning thousand cranes, and it is said that if someone folds a thousand cranes, they are granted one wish. Um, and then it talks a little bit here about um, how it is uh, told in that story. And I guess the reason why you have to like fold a thousand of these cranes is uh, in some like old Japanese like folklore and mythology, those cranes would like live to be a thousand. Uh. So that's kind of where it comes from. And the term... Uh, Renzuru, uh, meaning conjoined cranes, refers to an origami technique where one folds multiple cranes from a single sheet of paper, employing a number of strategic cuts to form a mosaic of semi-detached smaller squares from the original large paper square, resulting in the cranes that are attached to one another. So I'll show this to you, dude, but like, it's just a bunch of cranes that are a Whoa. part of one thing. I'll put that on the Instagram, but that's wild. that is a, uh, that would be a cool thing to do, but I mean, I used to watch YouTube videos of, um, like, just origami people, like these origami masters. And it's like there are people that are, like, active, cre actively creating these things. And it's just so crazy to me that, like, someone had to think of how to fold all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know how I ever would have figured that out. But this guy's like, well, you know, there's different levels. And once you understand basic folds, you kind of know how you would get there and here. And so he was going through. And a very easy and beginner step for like origami is a cicada which is very prevalent in japanese culture as well mm. and so he was like oh yeah so for like these kinds you do this and you kind of get it you're like okay these first few are the uh, folds are the same and then it gets a little more advanced but then once you get to like a certain point you have to completely change the way you fold everything and i'm like how would you even think like how much practice how much time does it take oh my gosh mm. and then sometimes it'll be like such a crazy advanced fold they have to get like a lot of origami is just with those square pieces of paper, but there's sometimes where he has to move to like a rectangle paper and then does like all, I just, I just can't believe it. Like, I don't even know how you envision it in your mind. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. Like it's like you said in the beginning, it's like a, um, sculpting art. It's like, like it's the like true you, master of the craft. It's like the SpongeBob episode where he starts with a block of marble. Yeah. 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 And then you get, you know, something out of it, but yeah, well, yeah, see, the somewhere. thing is, is, like, uh, that that would be me. I'd be, like, Squidward trying to, like, hit it, and it would just shatter. But yeah. then these people, they just tap it once, and it's just the Michelangelo's David. Speaking of which, did you know Michelangelo's David is 17 feet tall? Hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. And then, like, I saw a picture of someone standing next to it, and I was like, that thing is huge. Yeah. I thought it was, like, maybe, like, my size or, like, maybe nine feet tall. Sure. Because it's on, like, a plinth. But 17 feet tall, dude. Yeah, when you think about it, that's pretty tall. That's like, yeah, it's pretty like tall. Like three of me? Well, a little less than three of me. I'm not dumb. Like a medium-sized tree. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's crazy. But anyway, all this talk of Japanese stuff, Brandon, I, uh, we heard a little bit about you talking maybe wanting a Japanese garden or perhaps a Japanese tree or... Well, we did go to a place here in St. Louis, and they do have a Japanese garden area, and I I just love all that stuff. It just especially like the Japanese maple, I love those, and just like the koi ponds and yeah. Well, and then oh my gosh, let me here you you keep talking, I'll bring it back up. and just like I just like that culture too. I'm into the anime, so. You weeb. I don't even know what that means. Um, weebs are the the people that like anime. Why? Why is it called a weeb? Uh, you know, Brandon, I'm trying to Google something else right now. I'll uh, have to look up what weaving is in just a second. Oh, so you're talking about the you're talking about being in a Japanese garden, and so like you know how it has that like almost like bonsai tree style. Mm -hmm. So that's called a uh, uh, niwaki, I believe. Um. And so that's like the Niwaki style. And so in Arizona, there's the Japanese Friendship Garden. 
and I might have already talked about this on the podcast that I went there, but I, don't think so. I like had a tour with like the lead gardener, and mm-hmm. his name was Tom, and he looked just like me. And my friends were with me, and they're like, "Is this you from the future? Like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, we have the same haircut. He looked a lot like me. Was, That's funny. It was really really funny. And he was just going in and talking about like. You know, because it was made in conjunction with a Jap, like uh, Phoenix's sister city in Japan, and they like okay. partnered to make it. Sure. And he was trained to like buy those people, and he was talking mm. about like, oh, I, you know, I use these tools, and we do like this style of pruning with these precise cuts. And he's like, you know, because of uh, you know how we're growing these trees, like you have to make these in the size of them too. It's like you make these cuts considering ten years from now. Yeah, that's wild. You know what I mean? And it is just, and it, and in like a lot of Asian cultures, like gardening is a very, very respected art. Thing. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's just, it's really viewed as an art and like a very honorable thing. Yeah. It's, it's viewed as a very like skilled position. And I understand why, like the tools they use are so much different than like your regular gardening tools here. They're very like, they just look more, I don't even know ornate yeah ornate and just more artistic i don't know like it's just they look fancier Mm -hmm. and they're used in more precise ways and the whole i don't know i like i've gone to school for plant stuff but i wish they had classes like uh horticulture and japanese culture you know what i mean i'm sure there's Mm -hmm. online stuff but it is just so cool but yeah that that style and then all of those trees are beautiful the cherry blossoms and thankfully we live in a climate where you can kind of have a cool japanese garden like that but The whole style of how they integrate it with, like, the water and fish and, I mean, really any Japanese garden I've ever been to looks like a painting. Oh, and it's so, it's so peaceful and so beautiful. And then you get these, like, rolling hills of the different colors of the leaves and, oh, my gosh. I mean, there are so many places in Japan I would love to go. Yeah. Especially the Isle of Tsushima. It seems like Japan's becoming a, a bigger uh, destination. I, I noticed the last couple of months that there's been quite a few people that have gone over there for vacation. Yeah, well, and it's so cool because there's Tokyo, and that's obviously a modern city. Yeah. But then there's still, like, so many, like, rural and agrarian places as yeah. well. So mm-hmm. there's still, like, so much beauty to be seen there. But anyway, Brandon, before we head into our next topic, um, a weeb. This is from Dictionary.com. A weeb is a divisive term for a non-Japanese person who is so obsessed with Japanese culture they actually wish they were Japanese. Oh yeah, that's not me. Weeb is a short form of weeaboo, first used by users of 4chan to insult obsessive fans of Japanese culture. A nonsense word, weeaboo, has actually been used since the early 2000s, almost as long as 4chan itself has existed. The shortened weeb, however, doesn't seem to have become popular until the early 2010s, Weeb first appears on Twitter in 2010, Urban Dictionary in 2011, and on 4chan's archives in 2021. Hmm. I just call everyone who watches anime a weeb. I understand, but I and that's kind also, of what it's kind of what people use it for now. I I know the type of people that they're talking about. Oh yeah, that they actually call weebs because of those yeah they dress dress like that all the time. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand, but no, I don't. I wouldn't consider myself a weeb. I have. A couple of I have, I have one more thing about origami before we move on because there's some other things I want to talk about. Okay, you weeb. <laughs> what origami animal are you? It's a quiz, so don't think too hard. Okay, I was gonna say there's like all animals. This is from <laughs> You're just asking me my favorite animal. Quote v quotev dot com. Okay, so Brandon, do you think you are a symbol of peace or freedom? Freedom, baby. God. Do you think you are a symbol of happy nature? Or mischief? Uh, what do you think? I don't know. I think, I mean, Somewhere mischief in the to middle. a point. Yeah, because you're like, you're both, you're very good. I don't we'll know. say happy nature. Okay. Because you are both. Yes. Depending on how many Palomas are involved. Correct. Okay, so I guess all of these are like, do you think you're a symbol of? Okay, so wisdom or good fortune? Good fortune. Symbol of. Well. Mm-hmm. Protection, independence, or responsibility? Independence. Pick one of these Japanese words. Tsusuru, Sakana, Chocho, Sobete? Totoro. That's not that's the not first option. Oh. Tsusuru. <laughs> Close enough. Totoro. Totoro. <laughs> Pick one of these Japanese words. Usagi, Tatsu, Kairu, Subete. Tatsu. Alright. Kame, Neko, Rayama, Subete. Kamehameha, bitch. Okay. Which animal do you think represents you out of these? Crane, 
fish, or butterfly? Crane's too basic, and I'm not basic. I'd say fish. Okay. Rabbit, dragon, or frog? Dragon. Turtle, cat, or llama? Cat. You are a fish, Japanese name Sakana. The fish is a symbol of happiness, well-being, freedom, strength, and courage. One Japanese legend tells of a carp who swam up a huge, powerful waterfall and into the sky to become a dragon. Because of this, fish have come to represent the strength, perseverance, and determination it takes to swim against the current. I'll take it. Yeah, that's a good one. That's not too bad. And uh, I will uh, fold and post an origami fish to the uh, the Instagram as well. All right. All right. And now, so for mine, all right, I'll say I'm peace, happy, I'm happy nature. Uh, I'll go wisdom. I don't have enough good fortune these days. Uh, protection, independence, responsibility, and independence, I guess. Um, Sakana? Uh, Japanese word, ooh. Usagi? I'll go with Rayama. And then which of these? Crane? I'll go crane, dude, because I am basic. Um, which animal? I'll go frog. I'd love to sit on a lily pad. And then I'll go turtle, dude. Because I was just saying earlier, I was at the zoo with someone. I was like, could you imagine how cool it would be to just be a turtle? You're just like, I'm in a shell. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Ooh, all right. It says, I am a crane. Japanese name, Tusuru. The crane is a symbol of long life, happiness, and good luck and peace. According to legend, if 1,000 paper cranes are folded, it is said that one wish will be granted. I'm fine with that. But anyway, Brandon, there was a... I, I love origami. I used to do it when I was in high school because uh, I saw that movie Blade. I, I feel like I talked about this before, but anyway. You have talked about Blade Runner. Yeah, but Blade Runner, they I, I have told this story, but it's fine. Um, origami is pretty prevalent in that movie, both movies, well, especially the first one, a little bit in the second one. Um, but that I saw that movie, and I was like, I want to get into origami, man, because the guy that does it, he like will just like make a little chicken. He's like, there you go. But he's like, he does it to call you a chicken, you know? And you're like, whoa, passive aggressive, man. That's offensive. Yeah, it's really good. Blade Runner's a great movie. Highly recommend it for anyone listening. Never seen it. Oh, you have to, dude. But so anyway, the, the, whole, the whole way this started, this whole drink, this whole concept happened because I By was you. at the zoo today. Oh. <laughs> well, I actually was kind of planning on a different drink. I wanted to do a mint julep, but we missed the Kentucky Derby, and uh, you, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because that was like yesterday, right? Yeah, or, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I was like, and I don't want to do an episode that'd be like, oh, it's after the mint ju- or after the derby, but the episode wouldn't have come out for almost a week, you know what I mean? And there's always like next year or something. It'll just have to be next year. Yeah. Well, so that was like my first idea. And then I was like, well, I have this other idea, but I don't know if I want to do that because it's kind of similar to one we just did. Hmm. So I was at the zoo and I had a couple of ideas floating around my head. I was at the zoo and uh, I was just having a great time looking at these animals, dude. Sure. And I love birds. So I was in the bird Bird. board. I was at the bird exhibit and I was like, yeah, birds are really fucking sick, man. Tweet, tweet, motherfucker. And there was one bird. Oh my God. I can't remember. Let me see if it's still in my search history, but there is a bird that the St. Louis Zoo has. But when it lays eggs, they're like emerald green. They almost look like Fabergé. Oh, really? Hmm. I am the worst person in the world. Oh, the elegant crested Tinamou eggs. Hmm. Look those up at home, and I'll post a picture of the Instagram. But they literally, they look like, uh, not Fabergé, but they look like almost like ornamental made out of jade. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But so I was walking around, and then I just like Googled, like animal-themed cocktails. Paper Crane came up, and I was like, and I remember that name because I was like, I want to do that again for the Baiju. And I was like, perfect timing. Yeah. Because we, we've been thinking about the Baiju, and we brought it back. We're going to have to do a paper plane because I'm, oh, pic- yeah. I'm trying to picture this drink with a whiskey instead. And I'm just like, that Baiju has such a strong flavor that I just don't know how, you know, like, how would you put, how would whiskey fit in I this? have no idea. Especially a bourbon because bourbons are kind of like a little more uh, spicy. Not spicy in heat, but has spices in it kind of thing i mean it also has a little more sweetness um but yeah no i would love to try that soon i guess it would be almost more of like a whiskey sour but are are any of the things in it a whiskey sour besides the lemon and whiskey yeah i mean i don't know i don't know i I would love to try it but i didn't i didn't want to miss this opportunity but speaking of birds we were talking about flamingos a minute ago uh so flamingos are pink because so you know keratin the thing in carrots that make them orange yeah 
So apparently that is pretty prevalent in a certain kind of algae and a certain shrimp. Mm. And that is what the flamingos primarily eat. So they turn this like reddish pink. And there are uh, certain parts of the world. It's mainly on one island. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But they eat like blue fish. And so they are blue flamingos. Oh. And so flamingos. I thought you said blue doesn't happen in nature. I know. Well, it's, you know, all that light refracting and all mm-hmm. of that. Um, mm-hmm. the, their nature is blue. But, uh, yeah, so I wonder how far can you push a flamingo's color? Like, obviously, it'd be difficult because, like, I don't want to just force feed it one thing so it misses out on other nutrition. Mm-hmm. But I would love to play God and just <laughs> see what kind of colors I could get a flamingo. You know what I mean? Green. Green would be cool. I bet a like a yellow golden flamingo would be great. Just feed it a bunch of McDonald's French fries. <laughs> or goldfish. Goldfish would work. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. Flamingos are really cool. But no, so I was at the um, the St. Louis Zoo, and I remember the first time. It was either when I first moved here when I was visiting in April. It was me, Danielle, and uh, one of our friends. And we went to the zoo, and I had never been before, and I was excited, and I was like, a free zoo. Cause in, free in, zoo, yeah. In Phoenix, the zoo is fucking expensive. Is it really? Yeah, which, oh, I have to get to that, too. But, um, so we went, and we, like, walked up to see the sea lions, and our friend was like, all right, I, you know, I saw the sea lions, let's go. And I was like, we just got here, let's look around. And this Who friend, goes just to see the sea lions? And then, you know who. And so our friend was like, oh, well, you know, uh, me, me and Danielle have ADHD. We, we can't just w- walk around the zoo all day. We, we, you know, we weren't, we are not going to put up with that. And then Danielle was like, uh, I want to walk around and see all the, like, right. you, the, don't right. make this about you. Yeah. And then we ended up having like a great day at the zoo. And then our friend was still like, oh, I just, uh, we should have just left earlier. But no, I had a great time. And I walked around that, uh, the reptile house and the monkey house. But today I saw the, I saw the bears, the, the birds and the penguins and mm-hmm. I love all that. But the guy, oh, yeah, sorry, I, you go. I haven't made it to some of those smaller houses and things. I've only seen like the big animals. I, I still have to go to the monkey house mm-hmm. or the chimpanzee, whatever, yeah, uh, whatever know. the all encompassing word for those apes are. Is it ape? Is ape monkey and gorillas and orangutans? I think so. I don't think I could go look at those. It's just too close to us. It it's freaks too, you out. Yeah, it's a little weird. I love the bird. I'd love to go back to the bird walk. Dude, dude those, those birds. birds are crazy. The The owls are, are glaring at oh, you. Oh, I love owls. They have some badass ones, dude. The owls are so fucking They have cool. this one called like the spec, spec, Spectacle Owl or something. Mm-hmm. Huge eyes. Yeah. And I like couldn't see it in the person I was with. They were like, Thomas, there it is. And I look and this thing's just like, <laughs> like fucking ready to swoop in and kill me. I was like, Jesus, you know? Yeah, I was uh, listening to a different podcast and they were talking about owls and They'll like swoop down and take off with a cat. Yeah, no, those things are crazy. They're um, fucking vicious, dude. My uh, my old roommate actually has a video of me where I was like looking out the back window and there's like an owl on the telephone pole and I just like have my fa- I'm like literally like face up against the window <laughs> being like, look, look, look at that thing. Can you believe it? Mm-hmm. I love owls, dude. They're so weird and cool and they like I saw one turn its head all the way around and mm-hmm. I'm like, why can you do that? That's so weird. <laughs> so, cool. but no, all of these birds are so beautiful, man. So good. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just I just want to talk about animals. Oh, and then I saw Guardians of the Galaxy 3. <gasps> you saw it? It's amazing. And Is if you it? like a- animals, well, mm-hmm. first of all, it's amazing, but it's fucking sad. Yeah. And if you like animals, it's like extra sad. Yeah. Because it's like Rocket's origin. Mm-hmm. And he's like a little bastard now, but he was once a cute baby raccoon of that course. didn't deserve everything that happened to yeah. him. You have to. I almost wish you saw because we could have reviewed it, but mm-hmm. it was so good. I want to see it. I highly, highly recommend it. I don't it. know if I need to see it in the theater necessarily but i mean you know i i re- i like the theater going experience i've kind of fallen off of it as of late i i think if i found like my theater here in town maybe i'll start going to movies again but you know i don't want it to be too expensive but i also don't want it to be shitty you know i want nice seats and i don't uh, want to pay an arm and a leg to i go generally see just go to the one that you and me and tina's went to yeah. for the mario movie that's just because it's nearby it was okay yeah um, there are those like Marcus theaters that have like the fancy reclining seats, but the yeah. one I go to is like out past Afton. My brother used to work at a Marcus theater. Those are far. I mean, they're good. I mean, I don't love the reclining seats because I don't like that it reclines your feet and the back. I would rather just have my feet up and like still be upright. Does that make mm, sense? Yeah, because you don't want to like have to lay down. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. 
I get it. Oh my god, dude! But when you I ever was... been? You ever real quick? Have you ever been to like a dinner theater? Uh, they had one in uh, in my town in Scottsdale, but I never went. We had one, and I think it went under. But I was just like, I don't. Movie theaters are expensive enough. Well, that, and then I was just like, how would I go eat dinner and then go to the movie? <laughs> like, yeah, well, because a lot I of don't need you I, walking and if in I'm front of me. If I'm seeing a movie in theaters, it's generally the first time I've seen it. I don't see movies a lot in theaters. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to watch the movie, not yeah. place my fucking order. Yeah, just the whole thing. Yeah. I like when you can get like a drink at a movie, though. I'm glad that that's like a thing. You ever uh, sneak any drinks in? Nah, I've done that a few times. No, oh. yeah. Well, well I you should. know, as a as a younger man, yeah. you're just like I'm doing I'm doing shit that I'm not supposed to. I'm doing hood rat shit. Like yeah. that fine was like oh, I'm just doing hood rat shit with my friends. Um, but anyway, no, it was really good. But I guess there was like a prom. That happened, oh. and then like all of these like kids were in the back hooting and hollering. Of course. And then I like walked out to like not like I didn't storm out. I was like walking out to go pee, and I like looked up as I was walking out, and it was like all these like teenage kids. You know, I was a teenager once. Sure. So they're finger banging yeah. in the back row. Well, yeah. So all well, no, <laughs> I didn't do that. Don't worry. Neither did I. But, but I, I know the time. But they were all in the back <laughs> row, and they were all like all the girls were, like sitting on the dudes' laps, and they all had these like insane like reflective sequins outfits, so I could just see them. It's not like they were wearing like a normal like they suit. left prom and went to a movie. Yeah, what I mean, f- we went to the ten forty five showing, which was a mistake. I didn't get home till two a.m. Of course, but it's like who who like leaves prom and be like, you guys want to see Guardians of the Galaxy three? Like, go to a party. But then there's back there hooting and all. I still had a great time. Go to, watching go the to movie. after prom. Yeah, I still had a great time watching the movie. But I was just like, "What the hell are they doing up there?" But this is the other thing I don't get. I remember in high school, I had a girlfriend, and she'd be like, "Let's go see a movie and a make out." I'm like, well, "If I'm paying we, to watch yeah. a movie, I'm gonna watch the movie." Are you no, kidding why are we me? Watching this stupid movie. And then not like she's trying to get like gross, but she'd get a little like frisky and handsy. I'm like, "Will you please?" I'm trying to watch. Like I am. <laughs> Get your hand off my leg. Stop trying to kiss me. I'm not. I'm trying to watch. Let's go park somewhere and do yeah. that. Like, there's no need to <sighs> waste, it's just so waste $12 to go watch exactly. a movie or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, Even if it's so a bad weird. movie, it's like I paid. I am watching this bad movie. Yeah, and so I. that's another reason why I don't really go to theater anymore is because just having to deal with like people who have no decorum. Yeah. The only The only time I like go to a movie theater yeah m- well i i also normally go during the day yeah but i didn't know that guardians of the galaxy had come out until it was like th- that day uh-huh. i thought it like another week and then like we and then it was me and a friend and then like we were at this like group dinner thing that ended up going late and i was like all right well let's do this 10 45 showing like I, if i could have i would have gone at like 11 a.m on a saturday but i got too excited i couldn't yeah. you know yeah i get it but uh so normally I see it during the day when no one's there, but I tell you, man, it's interesting. I don't know where I would rank Guardians three in terms of the the hierarchy because I don't know finales are difficult, you know. And I don't think it's. I mean, it was really good, and I don't, but I don't really know if it's fair or possible to rank a finale against the other episodes because there's a lot more responsibility, I guess. Yeah, but it was really good. The character arcs are good. I had a lot of fun. There was like there's some good action. Uh the music was pretty good. Like the music I don't think has the same staying power. Like I have the first two on vinyl and I yeah. can just listen to those. I'm like, damn, bop after bop after yeah. bop. Those, mu- one, those movies did really well with yeah, the music. And this one, the soundtrack does really good for the movie. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if it's something I would want to listen to on repeat in the same way. Right. But it still does a good job in the movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know what you're saying. But, dude, this Batman. Like, they picked good songs for the movie, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. wouldn't go and listen to them on the way home. Yeah, and then, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, don't worry, but, like, the the bad guy, he's just a bad dude. And well, you're very, like, get this mother, dude. And they, they teased him in one of them. I can't remember which one it was. Maybe it was the second one. The movie? The bad guy. They tease the bad guy. Oh, at the well, kind of. So at the end of Guardians Two, they tease Adam Warlock, but yeah. he is not the bad guy. Oh, he's okay. he's like a, a nuisance. Mm. The bad guy is the high evolutionary, and he is the one who created Rocket. Oh, okay. Harper, I cried. I yeah. cried in that movie. Yeah, yeah. But Adam Warlock, he's a little different than in the comics, but I like. What the, what, when when you see it, we can talk more about it. Okay. But I like 
the changes they made, mm-hmm. but it was good. Was he like an anti-hero or? Uh, I mean, it was more just kind of, of like, like an independent, does his own thing kind of thing, or is he on the side? Or he's kind of like uh, someone tells him to go do a thing, and then he does it. Uh-huh. Like he, he hit what he does. He's like in the first like ten minutes, and he kind of sets the plot going. Okay, but then he's like, wait. Should I be fighting these people? Gotcha. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, but uh, his kind of story, he's he's like funny and his story kind of goes in a good way. Okay. All these other characters and a few of the actors have said like, yeah, this is my last Guardians movie. Really? And I'm, yeah. And I think they, they're they still going to do some Guardian stuff, but some of the actors were like, yeah, this is my last one. I don't want to do this Marvel thing anymore. And like. There's no, like, character ending where I'm like, really? I'm all like, that makes sense for them. I'm glad they're doing that. Okay. And, you know? It was really good. Okay. Two post credit scenes. Yeah, usually there's one yeah. after, like, the main credits, and then there's one after, like, the full credit. Yeah, but overall, really good in my opinion. I think it's time for a second drink. I agree. Uh, oh, right. So here we are with our second drink. Oh, that's good. Did you make any changes or happy with how it is? Yeah, I just left it. It's good. I, um, like I said at the beginning, I think the only thing I would change is maybe adding some celery salt or some celery bitters in there just yep. to kind of brighten up the... Uh, I definitely think as it is, the proportions are good. And I think... I j- actually, I do think celery salt would be the move because I feel like a little bit of that salt brininess yeah. would be good for this. So mm-hmm. the celery bitters would be great. Or maybe a couple drops of celery bitters and a pinch of salt. No, because remember, in Born on the Baiju, it has a pinch of salt, a part of the recipe. Right. So, yes, yeah, celery salt. And we even said celery salt would be good in that drink, too. But mm-hmm. celery bitters or celery salt or a pinch of salt. I'm thinking, that would be really great. That's just good with the baiju. I'm thinking some celery salt on the ice while you're, you know, mixing the rest oh, yeah. of it in the shaker. And it kind of like, oh, yeah. you know, makes that ice a little colder and kind of infuses into the ice. And then when you pour it in there, it just... <sighs> Damn it, I dude. I wish I thought of that. Next time. I cannot wait for us to get back to the baiju. I love baiju. I know. I'm going to have to find another Chinese holiday. Or, I mean, I, it's not that I feel bad, but it's just... Uh, the, yeah, we're talking we're talking Japanese stuff with the Chinese alcohol, so it's unfortunate that I uh, origami is in Chinese for this situation. But paper crane, yeah, which well. you did for the name, but guys, a, a, a shot of baiju is a bit of an odd taste. But we we had a sip and we're like, mm, and then we're like, oh, it's very different. But yeah, like, it's not bad. Once you have it a couple times, you're like, you know what? I actually, it's so different and unique, and it's bright and. F- f- floral and fruity and it's just like it's it's just such an interesting flavor well and then i think it's really good because um <clears throat> so it kind of has that tropical fruity taste right um and it, and by fruity i don't mean really sweet no um but in the uh, born much, on much the like baiju, we talk about the rind taste yeah, yeah yeah and born on the baiju we did grapefruit juice and um, there might be room for like a baiju paloma, baiju grapefruit soda, and a squeeze of lime. Buddy, no, we that might be that might Buddy. be something we try. But um, in born Brother. on the baiju, it born was born on the paloma, born on the pol- born <laughs> on the dove. <laughs> but um, uh, so it was with grapefruit juice, and the grapefruit juice we had had some sugar in it. But I mean, it would be fine with like real grapefruit juice, like yeah. the bitterness, and then the elderflower liqueur. And that balanced really well with the celery and the salt. And then this has the Aperol, which is a sweeter Campari. But um, th- this could be like an experiment we do another day. But like, I bet this would even taste good with just the com- like with the Campari, mm-hmm. because like this goes really well with those bitter notes. Yeah. And then on the other, but it was a sweeter Campari. And then this uh, Amaretto Montenegro, Amaro, um, um, Amaro Montenegro. Um, it had a black licorice ish taste, but that wasn't what it was. It was like reminiscent of black licorice. Yeah. But and like even that bitter in it, it just this balances with things so well. I don't even know how to describe it. And it's not like any of those there's a little bit of a um, bite bitterness to this. Mm-hmm. But it's not the drink. I don't know how to describe it. This is it's like the great equalizer. Yeah. I just I I recommend everyone go and get it. It is so good. It's a very well balanced and it's not that um that like washed out balance yeah where it's just like meh 
Well, and it's we, like a very well-rounded. We shook this. Correct. And we have it with ice here, and it doesn't get watered down. Uh-uh. The taste stays. Yeah. Well, could you imagine if you didn't shake this? It'd still be good. I, I mean, like if you uh, drink it neat or something weird. That'd be that'd be something. That'd be a boozy drink. And this is another one of the, I mean, we that's almost all we drink now, but it's one of these pure alcohol drinks. Yeah, minus the still, lemon juice. Yeah, still great. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm so glad we got that by you the first time. God, dude, it's so good. And there's this, there's this YouTuber, his name is like Andong or something. He's like Chinese German or something like that. Whoa. But he does these like cooking videos. Yeah. And, all, and he, like, travels the world and shows you how to make different cuisines from different parts of the world. And he'll be like, this is Chinese food with the German spin or French food with the Chinese spin. Really okay. good stuff. Okay. And he had a video sponsored by Ming River Baiju. And that's how I found out about this. And he made a drink that actually used, like, oh, so he made a video on how to make your own hot chili oil. Oh, okay. And then he, like, made a recipe with... Ming River Baiju, and, the chili and it's like oil. a thing. And then you just put a couple drops of the chili oil on it. Okay. I'll have to find that video and see what that is because it kind of looks good because every once in a while, like a spicy cocktail hits. Yeah, we just... And it, and it wasn't like flooded with it. It was just a couple of drops almost. It's, you know, just to give you that little zip. We were just having a conversation this weekend with a friend of ours that uh, she said she's getting into... She's been into jalapenos lately. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and she was like, I, I want to try a jalapeno margarita. Those are good. They make jalapeno-infused tequilas for that, too. Right. But that would be good. Mm. I would love to try that, too. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. I would almost like, I think if we, um, when we're ready to double dip into some drinks, when we mm. want to do a, like a margarita, I'd love to do a spicy margarita. Yeah. And I would love to do it with an infused tequila. Yeah. Some jalapenos and maybe like one habanero in there to add some heat and uh those floral flavors but yeah i love spice dude i love the spicy um i think i'm going to after this i'll take a picture of the bottles of all these too because they're such cool bottles oh yeah i think think all of them are cool they should be featured on the uh the instagram it was really really good i love that i love that liqueur and i'm so surprised you know we didn't we were kind of unsure about it at first weren't we well, we had our, like, intro shot, and we were kind of like, hmm. Just because of how different it is? It, it is just different. Like, there was never I mean, it's a... kind of gasoline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is a little bit gasoline. But there was never a point where we didn't like it. Because Tina's was like, oh, it's healthy. But that was the celery, right. you know? Yeah. Um, the celery mixed with, like, the... With the grapefruit the and all that. The fruit notes, yeah. But then, yeah, no, it's just good. I've been saying that a lot lately. These drinks are just good sometimes. But this is a very, it's a very distinct taste, Mm -hmm. and it just opens up other alcohols in a very interesting way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, since we've started doing this podcast, I I always say it, but I've been getting more into cocktails. I'm I'm learning something new every week. And just, like, different types of liqueurs and, you know. You know what, let's actually talk about the other things that are in this. I kind of teased it at the beginning, but I didn't even get into what these are. Aperol. Which you thought Aperol was just a Campari brand. Yeah. I, th- I think it's probably, it's Italian, so I think it's in the Campari family. Is it A-P-R-O-L? A-P-E-R-O-L. There we go. Yeah, sorry. I like Googled it and it wasn't working. Okay, so this is from Wikipedia. Aperol is an enti- it- Italian bitter aperitif made of... Uh, Gentian rhubarb and chin, uh, cinchona. Yeah, I did see that it was like florals and roots. Yeah. Wow, this is interesting. Gentian is a okay, just different kinds of plant. I just never really seen those words before. Plant parts. Um. So it was created by uh, in 1919 by Luigi and Sylvia Barbieri. The person that made our logo's last name is Barbieri. Oh, <laughs> that's. I was weird. like, where have I heard that name before? <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell them. Maybe they need to look into that. Um, after seven years of experiment, <laughs> so it was created by Luigi and Silvio Barbieri. After seven years of experimentation, it did not become widely popular until after World War II. Um, 
Mix variants. Okay, so it's very pro uh, popular in an Aperol Sour and an Aperol uh, Spritz. And nothing I'm seeing here is about Campari. Maybe it's just a similar, um, what's it called, uh, bottle label thing. Um, that is so funny. I cannot believe that that's like the same last name. That's so interesting. All right, and now, so Amero... Montenegro. Yeah, sorry, I wanted to grab these oh, bottles yeah, no while we were talking. Um, so Aperol is eleven percent by volume, which not not too bad. And then this Amaro twenty two Montenegro is twenty three. Okay. Well, so speaking of that Amaro, the uh, uh, or Amaro Amaro Montenegro is traditionally. Uh, is traditional Amaro distilled in Bologna, Bologna, Bologna Italy, Bologna, Bologna, yeah. Italy. So Amaro since eighteen is an Italian herbal liqueur. What's the stuff made out of almonds? Amar Amaretto? Uh, Amaretto. Amaretto. Okay. So um, it is made from a secret blend of forty botanicals, including vanilla, orange peels, and eucalyptus. That's interesting. I don't know if you saw this. There's, like, blurbs on the back of this bottle, too. Oh, what does it say? Some of the same stuff, but um, first made in Bologna in 1885 by the young rebel genius Stentisalo Cabacin. I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry, Italians. Uh, in homage to Princess Elena of Montenegro, future queen of Italy. De Zuno saying its praise, calling it liqueur of the virtues. Um, then we got a little another blurb here. Incomparable with its 40 botanicals from all over the world, selected and extracted and mixed according to the secret recipe. Jealousy handed down through the generations, making it an incomparable product. So this thing here on Wikipedia says something. So, uh, Cabianchi? Uh, traveled from continent yeah. to continent, collecting 40 rinds, woods, seeds, rhizomes, flowers, fruits, citrus peels, uh, roots, stems. And, did I say roots twice? Anyway. Uh, Amaro Montenegro is the result of a process that has been passed down through generations unchanged since 1885. The master herbalist oversees the entire production process, just as uh, Chobanchi once did. Boiling, ma maceration, and distillation performed in accordance with the traditional method breathes life into the six aromatic notes. Aromatic notes, sorry. The signature note, the seventh, is the primo, which seals the final quality of the product. Oh, yeah. I actually have that here, the distillation. I have a more expanded of the distillation mm -hmm. process. Oh, so real quick, the famous Italian writer, uh, Gabriele de Annu Annunzio, uh, once described it as the li uh, the liquor of virtues, right. but uh, on their production process, it says the forty botanicals and caramel color that comprise Amaro Montenegro come from the four continents. Some of these perfumes are from the Mediterranean, and such as coriander and artemi artemisia, uh, as well as some uh, aromatic plants, oregano, marjoram with bitter and sweet orange, nutmeg, cloves, and cinnamon. Once they reach the herbalist workshop, the botanicals undergo three forms of extraction, boiling, uh, maceration, and distillation. After this, 12 mother essences are taken and synthesized into six tasting notes, bitter and herbaceous, spicy and floral, chocolate and caramel, fresh and balsamic, uh, vanilla and red fruits, and warm and tropical. One final a uh, element is added to these six notes called uh, premio. Uh, it is the final and fundamental ingredient of the secret recipe. These are finally added to alcohol, water, and sugar to leave the bitter orange-flavored spirit with an uh, ABV of 23%. Ugh, sorry. Everything uh, about this just screams Italian. Yeah, everything. The, uh, from the bottle to the taste yeah, to all this great. extra shit that they did. To, to, <laughs> passing down the recipe for generations and all that shit just screams yeah. Italian for so many it says, reasons. says, uh, Amaro Montenegro can be drunk on its own or used as an ingredient in many cocktails. So we had our sip of it earlier, yeah, and it's not something that I would ever take a shot of, mm -hmm. but I could imagine with like a big rock, yeah, and then I would maybe get like an orange rind and express it, get those you know whoosh, with mm -hmm. the orange things, yeah, I think you could sip that, I could see it, I could see it, 
but it is damn good. And it's, <coughs> and it's a part of what makes the color in this drink so goddamn good. I'm drinking mine, man. Look at that. I, I'm here I'm with you. I'm a goddamn you. animal. I'm right here with you, buddy. But damn, that is good. Terrible. Highly recommend. I mean, by you in general. I'm going to write them an email. Mm. Tell them, hey, we love it. We've done two episodes now with yeah. that liquor fe- being featured. and Both times we're over here. It's good. It's good as hell. I love it. And it's just, it, it's, it's not. It's just good. I, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of it other than the one YouTube video, but like I feel like it's not a very public. Yeah, no, any time I've ever liqueur. gone to buy it at the store, there's only one on the shelf. It's not something that they're like selling in droves where they need to constantly keep it stocked. I'm sure they only have like a handful of bottles at any time here right. at uh, Randall's. Yeah. Because, you know, every other one, they'll have like five, six bottles deep. Mm-hmm. I've only ever seen this with one. That's the same way with that um, that scotch. Oh, that... Uh, the rum finished scotch. Yeah, that was damn good. Dude. That's the same way. I don't think I've ever seen more than one or two bottles of that. And that's why it's always sold out. And also, same thing with my tequila that I've been getting too. Yeah. Half the time it's not there. That's really too bad. But that's good, man. We're, we're getting to the weeds. We're finding the good hidden gems. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Main River, and then, and is... then that that tequila is on the bottom shelf. It's not like <laughs> yeah. front and center, eye level, or anything. It's like well, maybe words out that it's good, you know. Oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to stop telling people. <laughs> about what's well, good. I mean, our number one <laughs> audience is here in St. Louis, so they're hearing it and they're they're going and buying all of them at the Randalls. We're gonna have to uh, partner with some of these places so that they can always just keep a bottle. Yeah, El Trago, if you're listening, we'd love to feature you on the show some more. Um, Please. But yeah, no Ming River. I think it's just Szechuan is just not an alcohol that. Um, is well known. I mean, even if there was like, I mean, it's really the only option we have out here, but if there are other options, like, like when I see a gin, a cool bottle can get me to buy it. You know what I mean? Oh, I know. And, I know. I'm the same way. And, oh, and I have a gin for us, dude. I had a sip of it before I came over. I was like, mm-hmm. that's what I've been waiting for. Yeah. They, they got me. Uh-oh. But it's a cool bottle. Okay. And it has what I want in it. Well, we've run into that a few times, just going off looks or yeah. whatever. And Ming River is a cool bottle, but I don't. I would look at it and be like, I don't know what Baiju is, and I can't even because if it's like a different gin, it's like, well, I know about what, what it's going to taste yeah. like. And yeah. then also, it's like gin cocktails are pretty popular. There's not a ton of Baiju recipes. I mean, the website has some, but sure, you know what I mean. Like you don't look at it and be like, oh yeah, Baiju. Well, I mean, didn't we just come up with a few that we could potentially make? Yeah, well, I mean, just now, yeah. Um, Born on the... Born on the Paloma. Paloma. Born on the Tequila Mountain. Well, no, because there's no tequila in it. I don't know. Born on the Paloma is good. That's fun. But which also... But Born on the Baiju is a reference to Born on the Bayou. Yeah. So we we take away the only Baiju (laughs) reference, which is funny, (laughs) which... Maybe that's what makes it good. I, I mean, because the other one's what uh, it's called Paloma, yeah. so you can't just be like, it's a Bajloma or a Born on the Paloma. That's pi- fucking funny. Paiju. That's it. That's it. Born on the Paloma. That's Born so funny. On the Paloma. Anyway, I love it. I'm so glad we came back to it because I haven't had it because after we had, God, we've come such a long way since Born on the Born on the Baiju because like we were, that was like back in the frostbite. Time. We're almost. This might be our second month episode well not to open up the curtain too much but we started recording in like october yeah and didn't release our first yeah. episode until like november november december yeah i don't remember dang we've come so far since even the frostbite day because i made a lot of frostbites after that yeah we did it when it was cold outside yeah and then we did uh the born on the baiju i made a lot of those that's i had to buy a new bottle of baiju for this episode i only uh-huh. had one shot left of baiju Surprise it lasted that long. And I'm not gonna lie, there was a there may or may not have been a, a couple dates that I've been on and then uh we'll be at my house. Nothing crazy, you know, watching uh watching a show. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. Um well no, I was uh I had already seen it. You know the show Peacemaker. Have mm-hmm. you heard of that? Yeah. Uh same director of that show is the one who directed uh Guardians, mm-hmm. James Gunn. Mm-hmm. Um and so I was watching it for like the first you no, know, the second or third time. I love that show. Sure. Which I cannot believe that I liked that show. Really? I did not I didn't like Peacemaker character in the Suicide Squad. No. And then I was like, I don't know about John Cena, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the show Peacemaker, really good, genuinely. Okay. All right. Um and it's like it's not like 
he he does really well, but it's like everyone in that show does great. Okay. But I remember uh, we, were, to give it a we were watching it, and uh, I was like, oh, hey, you want me to make you a drink? She's like, oh, sure. Whip up the born on the baiju. It's like it's a little something. And I'm like, oh, I've never had anything like this. It's like, yeah, it's a Ming River baiju. You there's, wouldn't have heard of it. There's a lot about me that you've never had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to be saying that a lot. Yeah. But there was a... I've never had anything like this. You've never had anyone like me. Um, <laughs> I know. I've made frostbites a couple of times. Just good. I'm like... And and we kind of... We've talked about this outside of the show, but like... And you, you even said it. Like, learning to appreciate cocktails. This show, I'm like, I'm learning a lot. And I'm having fun talking about this stuff. People like talk to me. I'd be like, oh, you know, I, I think a gin is best used in a this and that. Oh, have you, have you ever had a, a Ward 8? Oh, mm-hmm. between the sheets... It's it's amazing, you know. I love Ward Eight. I love being pretentious, but I love the Ward Eight too. Well, and I've run into this having taste tested a lot of seltzers and stuff too. I just, you know, kind of overhearing conversations or somebody, you know, you're in a group of people and someone brings up seltzers or something, and you're mm-hmm. just like, you're like, I actually know extensively well, about this topic. A lot of time, I I generally don't jump in unless. I feel the need Oh, see, to. I would. That's I know difference. you would. And I just kind of let people do their thing unless there's like a question that's proposed. And I'll be like, uh, so have you thought about this? Yeah, well, and there, there's, uh, it was, uh, so you play volleyball recreationally. And there's one time where uh, I was out with you guys. Uh, you were playing volleyball and I, I got a, a seltzer. And I was like, damn, this is really good. I, I kind of want to see, because it was like a new pack. Yeah. And I had one flavor. I was like, oh, I kind of want to have the other one. I was like, no, we might have a video about it, and it's I true. gotta save my thoughts. It's just like with this, like we were talking before the show. We're like, no, save it for the podcast. I know. We, I don't exist outside of this anymore. Well, Every we, thought I have, it's like, would that be good for the pod? We did hang out the other day, just we smoking did. cigars. Oh, that was so good. Literally, just came over, smoked a cigar, and left. No, didn't need to record anything. Not, just, I love just hanging it. out, dude. And it is the weather has been so that perfect stick weather. Perfect stick smoking weather, but it's been so yeah, good. Yeah, well, today Except got for the hot. wind the past week. Today got hot. Yeah, so today, out of nowhere. earlier, I was at work. Welcome to the Midwest. You know how it is, doing some tree stuff. Um, and it was, like, really nice out. Listen to my music. And yeah. I was like, damn, this is why I moved to, This is why I moved out here to St. Louis. Nice as hell out, right? And then it got all dark and gloomy. I'm like, oh, damn, it's probably going to rain. And then it didn't. And then it just got, like, unnecessarily hot. Yeah. And I was like, I got a little crispy at the zoo. And then on my way here, it, like, had three raindrops. And then it just never rained. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, Missouri. Yeah. Like, can, all right. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's yeah, welcome to the Midwest, I guess. A hundred percent. Damn. If you've ever seen the meme of, like, a person walking through, it looks like pains, but it's just, like, winter, summer, spring, yeah. fall. And it's like. That's what it is out here, man. 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Spectrum of seasons there in one day. It's a trip out here. Yeah, because it was like fifty degrees what three days ago, and then it was like eighty eight today. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing, man. It's 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 like in Arizona, same thing every day, no problem. But out here, like you have to check the weather to know what to prepare for. Yeah, and you but can't, you can't look too far ahead because they don't know what the fuck's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, but you also and, and, and they still like hour to hour they still. Well, know what I, the fuck's I was going to say even if the weather is accurate, yeah. it still changes so much that you can't just trust them. It's like, oh, okay, well they say it's going to be hot. Oh, well it's going to be cold for cold and windy this part of the day, and then hot later. So it's like, don't dress too but it, but it warm. But might, it might also not be. Yeah, like don't dress too warm, but make sure you have your jacket. But it also might just be cold or hot all day. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And then we just had this insane wind. Yeah. You know what I mean? And my mom has been calling me. Hi, mom. And she's been like, oh, you know, have you been, uh, you know, there's a storm coming across the Midwest. And have you been, doing this? I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, I'll be driving to work and I feel the wind pushing my car. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Or um, on Cinco de Mayo, uh, we were like leaving work and we said this like little cut up line when we were about to leave work. And we we're like, all right, let's have like one Corona for uh, Cinco, Cinco de Mayo. De Mayo yeah. And so we're like, all right, great. Or the. You know, and of course, as we know, it's the uh, 161st anniversary of the Mexicans defeating the Second French Empire at the Battle of Puebla. Yeah, because somebody went, um, you know, what was the birthday of the Mexicans. I was like, that's not, yeah. that's not what it is. <laughs> like, actually tune into the Jen and Thomas podcast and you'll hear all about it. 
I just quickly just threw it out there. Is one of the like I said before, one of those group settings where yeah. you know sometimes you know some shit, and I was just like, actually, it wasn't. Really well, and it's funny. Um, I put it on my story. I don't even. Remember. I think it's the 161st anniversary. But my Mexican friend texted me, and they're like, "Calm down. We don't even <laughs> like." I didn't even know it was the 161st, and it's like, yeah, I am talking a little bit of shit, but it's like. I just talked about it. That's why I yeah. know. Like I just yeah. I was, okay. It I was mean, literally yesterday. Yeah, you didn't need to put the the number necessarily, but also just be like. But that's why it was funny though, because it's not Mexico's Independence Day. It's not. Yeah. Ugh. And so many people think it is. I know these people. I tell you. Oh goodness! But anyway, Brandon, before we wrap up, I have uh, a couple of questions. Because I, I put up a post and we got inundated, so I have some for uh, I have some for this week that I think are some uh, some bangers. Before we do that, yeah, no problem. I That's have right. I have an idea. Yeah, I'm here. All right, so I just uh, poured some of the Amaro 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 Montenegro into our empty glasses. Yeah, so welcome full to the two point two five drink. This is just a little sip, so just the uh, a part of our drink here. I get it. I just had a sip. I get it. I mean, wow. this isn't my favorite, like, but this is something that I could really like. It's like the first time you have whiskey neat, you're like, nah, that's pretty spicy. But then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm getting the the flavors here. I get it. So the, the, the little bit of water and the cold opens it up. There's another liquor we've had before that reminds me of this. I can't, put my, I can't tell you what it is. I can't remember. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is Campari. I don't know if this is the... Oh, maybe, though. I think it's got kind of Campari flavors, which makes sense. They're both Italian. Is it Campari? I mean, Campari is definitely more bitter. Oh, yeah. Like, way, this is way sweeter than Campari. Yeah, this, but, is, this is the Amaro it's got, Montenegro, not the Aperol. It's like, got it's, that, it still has a little bit of that botanical. Yeah. There's like that bitter botanical uh, that note. Or it, almost like you're biting into an orange rind a little bit. Something like that. Yeah. All right. So, a little bit of questions before we close out the show. Please. All right, Brandon. Um, this is for you know both of us. Uh, what is your opinion on biofuels for aviation? Biofuels for aviation. Technically, isn't oil technically a biofuel? If we really want to get into it, I do not know. I know it's a fossil fuel, but I mean, technically, it was biological. Um, I don't know if it'll work. Um, if it, I don't, I don't know if, I, I don't if, know if they can make it power that. The way it's supposed, you know. Well, as someone that has no edu- uh, engineering uh, education, um, if it works, then I am pro biofuels. Is that a good stance to have? Yeah. Okay. Because it's more renewable than like a fossil fuel. Is it like the vegetable oil thing? Uh, I think it would be more comparable to like burning cow shit mm. or like corn. That'd be good. Or, you yeah, know, like cool. ethanol. Yeah. Ethanol is a biofuel. Okay. Like those cars that have the biofuel thing. Um, flex fuel. Yeah. I'm not an engineer. Uh, <laughs> but if you guys are interested in aviation, there is a YouTube channel that I used to like a lot more, and I still like it. But it's this, it's this like, little pilot guy. His name is, like, Swain. And it's really funny because you can track his career throughout his YouTube videos. But he started mm-hmm. doing these little, like, pond hopper planes in, uh, um, in Hawaii. And then he's like, hey, guys, today's the average life of a pilot. And me and my friend Daniel, not your Daniel. Um, it'd be weird if I was hanging out with your Daniel watching like a, like a 20-year-old pilot. But he's like, today's in the life of a pilot. And it's just so funny. Like, and he, he like used to take you in the cockpit and tour the whole plane. But he's just been like moving up. And you're like, oh, good for him. But now he works for United. And he mm-hmm. like can't show as much anymore. Yeah. But I'm just like, damn it, Swain. You got, you got too big. Well, so that car guy I watch on YouTube has mm-hmm. recently gotten into planes and helicopters and stuff. So I'm starting to see some of the aviation YouTube deal. Yeah. All right. Um, John Mayer or John Candy? John Candy. Is that I even agree. a question? Uncle Buck's a, was, a, was a good one. Gone too soon. Yeah. Uh, they all are. Just like um, all the good Chris ones. Farley, yep. Tommy Boy. Yep. If you were going to splurge on one item this year, what would it be? Item? Mm-hmm. Not experience? One thing. Like a physical thing, I guess. I mean, I would probably... I know it's like boring, but like the new Xbox. I'd love to have that thing because I want to play the new Jedi game. Right. I guess the taxes on my car. Uh, ch- sure, that's an item. Okay, here's a question. What does it smell like? Uh, I don't know what she mean. I don't uh, know what they mean this? by it, but... Herbal. Yep. 
So I put my money on. All that, right. It smells like 40 different things. Do you think rates will go down this year? No. Okay. What rates? That's for you to decide, listeners. Um, the exchange rate of blue agaves and whatever the fuck I say. Oh, here's one. Uh, what's a good question to ask for the next Q&A? Literally anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, except that question. Oh, anyway. these are questions from our Instagram? Yeah. Okay. I was I was like, where is he getting all this? Is this a blog? What is this? Yeah, no, I, I put the post up on Insta. Don't worry. I'm, I'm doing it now because okay. I'm, I'm getting, like, responses from people now. You're here first, Finally, folks. people are responding. Okay, I have one last one. And I don't know if you can answer this. Martini or Negroni? Negroni. See, I might go martini on Well, this. we need to have a martini here. Yeah. I mean, I've had a martini before, but I haven't had, like, the martini. Yeah. I mean, I've had I, a variation. And we've talked about this before, but for our um, martini episode, I can't... I don't know. With a lot of these drinks, I kind of feel like you can do, like, a, a, an episode of a margarita and then an episode with, like, a strawberry margarita or something. You know what I mean? Like, that much of a difference. But with There's martinis... There's so many variations of martinis. Yeah, but for a martini, I feel like we could do an episode... Like, I feel like it would almost be better this... I don't know why, but I feel like it would be better to do an episode of, like, doing, like, kind of, like, the core recipes of it in yeah. one episode, but, yeah. like, maybe just do them half so we're not blasted. Right. Because it would kind of... Be, I don't know why, but it doesn't feel right to be like, oh, today's our martini with lemon. Oh, uh, n- now we're doing a martini with an olive. Yeah. Like, it almost seems too similar. And uh, and I would... I'm, one recommendation is throw in the uh, James Bond version in there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I'd be more than happy to do two martini episodes. But, and I like, think there's, there's a some Winston that are Churchill just, one, too. Yeah, and, but know. for, like, the core recipes of, like, with a twist or uh, sure. make it dirty or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway. Um, but, yeah, so that was this week's questions. Very quick, very um, almost rapid fire. Yeah. But, yeah, if, uh, anyone with questions at home? And I have, and I have one question that I want to roll into next week. Okay. I've got one question here that I'm going to pull into next week along with our post. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, but if anyone ever has questions, feel free to either respond to a story, DM the Instagram, tweet at me, or tweet at us on the Instagram or on Twitter, and uh, also email us at uh, jenthomaspod at gmail. And also, if any brands are listening, yeah, go ahead brands. and email us. I have reached out to a couple, but they did not respond, which is pissing me off, because the alcohol I'm trying to get from them isn't available here. Why wouldn't they respond to the biggest I podcast? I know, and also, don't have a fucking contact me page if you're not even going to respond and be like, no. Right. And I didn't even, I didn't no even say word is worse send than... me a bo- Whatever. I'm not getting into it, but when I get my hands on that bottle, I have big plans. But anyway, Brandon... Um, We've had a lot. I feel like this has been a good free flowing conversation. For sure. I, I honestly, I could keep going. Yeah. But the memory card cannot. We're running out of time. Exactly. So <laughs> I have to buy a new one this week. But uh, I can't believe it. This one memory card lasted us so long. Uh, at least six months. At least. So, Brandon, where can they find you? Uh, at Brandon Churchill on YouTube, Brandon underscore Churchill underscore 95 on Instagram, Brandon Churchill without the U and Churchill on Twitter. Uh, find me in the streets. This Amaro Montenegro, I cha- I, I've I've done a one. It's amazing. I like it. I like it on the ice. I can do this. I yeah. mean, it's not something I would do consistently, but this is nice. Oh, a cold? No, you could do. Yeah, you could do this as a after dinner drink Christmas after your Christmas ham well, and the, all of that. The aperol is an aperitif. And this, I don't and know if this it is said a digestif. I don't. Did it say it was a digestif? No, I'm just making that oh. up. But it, it, it's similar. It's almost, it's almost a little bit like a Jaeger, different but yeah. similar. Yeah, you could have this because there is a sweetness to it. You could have this after a big meal during the cold months. Yeah. Oh, even out, even after Thanksgiving. Um, after any. <laughs> yeah, after any big dinner, any, you know. But it's it's, it's 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 almost like a little. It has those uh like fall spices. Yeah. It has the cinnamon and clove in it. Yeah, but then it also has that stuff that would work for like Christmas time. I think um, comparing it to Jaeger is almost an insult, but uh, it's well, no, in the I same just family. mean in that botanical yeah, yeah, herby yeah, thing. Yeah. It's in the same family. Um, is all. I'm gonna rate this on my own. Actually, I'm I'm gonna give this a seven. Seven what? A blue agave out of ten. <laughs> um, I will give it uh, three hundred potatoes. I like that. That's a good one. Um, but anyway, everybody. So uh, as for me, you can find me on Instagram at Bad Boy of Botany and Capped 
cool kid that is c a p t cool kid did it backwards this time um as for the instagram you can uh, i'm sorry as for the podcast you can follow us on instagram at jen and thomas podcast you can follow us on twitter and youtube at jen and thomas pod and like i had mentioned earlier uh email the show and you can just email us to say hi we'll read out your emails i don't care what it is oh i'll read so out emails we'll start doing fan mail yeah we'll do fan mail i'll do fan mail yeah I would highly recommend going and subscribing to the Instagram because, I mean, we announce the episodes on there, but also we do post the drinks. Yeah, we post the drinks. We post a picture and the recipe with the yeah. drinks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a great way to stay updated. I tried to, like, make my Twitter do an automatic post when I make the episode, but it's not doing it. So, mm. I mean, I'm tr- I don't, I'm just not on Twitter. I just look at Suns and Steelers. I've been tweeting more. I, I tweet every now and then. tweets. You're doing a daily tweet for like a week. I might go back to doing that. That'd be good. Uh, yeah, but it, send into the email. You can email us questions. You can email us stories. Just say hello. E- email us or DM us. Get drink ideas to us because I'd love to know what you guys want to drink. You know what I mean? You could put a confession in there and then put anonymous at the beginning of yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll put, do your confessions. Put, we'll give you advice. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll do give, whatever you we'll want. Give, we ask in in the oh, I feel like we'd give I feel like we'd give good advice in the subject. Put what it is. Yeah, advice or anonymous. Um, um, what did I call it? Um, confessions. Anonymous confession. Yeah. Or, or drink anonymous. Idea. You could be like, "Hi, my name is Joshua Jacobs from Brazil, Illinois, or Brazil, Indiana, and I did this crime." <laughs> I mean, I'll read it. We'll keep you anonymous. Yeah. on the podcast <laughs> yeah um <laughs> but anyway everybody uh that was the show i had a lot of fun with this one i had a great day today dude good just a good day good day got to see you got to go to the zoo i saw so many beautiful birds i'm gonna go home and make some origami um yeah, yeah. but anyway everybody uh that is the show so uh we appreciate you coming out and sharing a drink with us don't drink alone share a drink with us um but you know how we like to close it out here uh you know uh uh, please drink responsibly don't drink and drive don't Don't drink drink and con a boat. boat and uh you know be safe be kind and good night